Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. A long time ago, a young filmmaker named George Lucas helped create a parallel dimension in a galaxy far, far away. It's a strange world with bizarre aliens and unbelievable creatures. A world that the sci-fi community will never, ever forget. Okay, the punchline is Howard the Duck. For all the strange things that George Lucas has done, whether it be bad, unnecessary, or just downright racist, nothing compares to the weird cinematic bomb that he actually made the strange choice of producing. Howard the Duck. <laughs> and if you think Jar Jar Binks was bad, he still is, but this is a creation that equally matches that theatrical travesty. So, what gave George Lucas the idea to attach his name to such a goofy movie? Well, maybe the comic book had something to do with it. That's right, this was actually based on a Marvel comic book by the same name. It was about a duck who came from a parallel dimension where everybody's a duck, but somehow got zapped into our reality to have a ton of strange adventures. Yeah, sounds like a blockbuster to me, too. Let's take a look. So we see Howard in his parallel world where he lives in an apartment of in-jokes. He sits around drinking beer, smoking cigars, you know, a kid's movie! Look at this thing, it looks like Donald Duck's missing nephew, Drunky. Thanks. So, yeah, he lives in probably the stupidest of parallel dimensions where every single person is a duck. It's like a bad episode of Twilight Zone that accidentally began with the twist ending. <laughs> Alright, so Howard's sitting there watching TV when suddenly... Don't you mean a quack? His chair starts to shake and rumble as he's propelled backwards through his apartment building, flying through dozens and dozens of walls until we see... Oh my god. It can't be. That cannot be real. That cannot be real! Hey, is there any point in reviewing the rest of the movie? I mean, you know I'm not going to be able to top that. I don't care if he runs into Jar Jar Binks, the Care Bears, and Fonzie from Happy Days. There is no way in that I am going to beat the I mean, what is the point? You're making a kid's film starring a cute little ducky, and you start out with duck Are you mad? What creepy pervert thought that up? I mean, this movie is rated PG, right? Uh, this is considered PG material? Are you seriously telling me that showing female is wrong, but showing Daisy's isn't going to cause any psychological damage? I think the people who rated this movie had psychological damage! I mean... Ew! So yeah, after you try to repress that memory, Howard continues to fly out of his apartment, actually into space. Suddenly, this guy's voice takes over and tries to tell us why. The cosmos. Countless worlds upon worlds. In these galaxies, every possible reality exists. What is, what was, and what will be start here with the words, In the beginning there was... Howard the Duck. Wow. All the coolness in the narrator's voice seemed to be magically sucked out just by the mentioning of the title. That's usually a good sign. So Howard somehow crosses dimensions and ends up in the terrifying land of the human world. But not just the human world. The human world of the 80s! Ah! He comes across this woman who's being attacked, and he decides to help her out. No one laughs at a master of quack foo! Alright, the obvious joke should have been Thai quack dough, but we'll let it slide. Every duck's got his limit. No more Mr. Nice Duck. This is obviously no place for an intelligent duck. Yeah, um, just to check, uh, how many more puns are there going to be where you simply insert the word duck in the common everyday phrases? Okay, I'm just gonna have this on standby. I hope you don't mind. So after being bailed out by a duck, boy, that's gotta be embarrassing, we learn that the young woman's name is Beverly. And as you can imagine, they both have some interesting questions for each other. Where am I? Cleveland. Cleveland? Uh-huh. That's a perfect weird name for this planet. Planet? No, no, that's the city. The planet's called Earth, I think. Earth, I think? Yeah, um, just to check, this, uh, idiotic wave isn't gonna play any major part in this movie by any chance, is she? Okay, bottoms up. So Beverly is about to leave poor Howard behind, but the awkward 80s love music suggests that she should do something else. Something 
Something started to change inside of you And right out of the blue Go to him, Beverly. Go to him. It can't be any worse than that time you let that singing giraffe sleep on your couch. You consider that progress? So being a sucker for a hard duck case, Beverly decides to take Howard in and let him spend the night. Nice place. You pay to live here? It's cheap. The manager of my band found it for me. I suggest you find a new manager. Hey, I'd love to, but we got this contract with the sleazoid. He won't even give us the money he owes us. You know you're talking to a duck, right? So Howard eventually falls asleep as Beverly partakes in a rather uncomfortable sequence. Hmm, Mrs. Duck. I guess I kind of like it. What am I gonna do with you? Well, roasted or extra crispy comes to mind. <laughs> So they go to a scientist played by Tim Robbins to see if he can figure out where Howard came from and how he got here. Nice ducky. Me, Phil. You, Howard. So he obviously doesn't help much, which means Howard is still stuck in the surreal world where he'll never seem to fit in. Look at this wonderful exhibit! I'm a freak, an outcast. Oh, look at the ducky! Look at the ducky! Beat it! I thought he was cute at first, but then he whipped his fingers and became terrifying! He also tells Beverly to go away, as he just wants to be left alone. That's the way you want it. And so long, ducky. Don't shed any tears over me, toots! You can wall in your own self-pity! <laughs> Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Ducks are from some parallel dimension where apparently they have ducks. And no shame. Oh, if you can believe it, Howard actually gets a job cleaning up at a local romantic spa. Because nothing says romance like a feathered alien cleaning up your love juice. That's really disgusting. Look at this, he gets thrown in the hot tub and the couple just keeps making out. What was that? Oh, it's just some small, fully clothed animomorphic life form swimming in our hot tub. Oh well. Despite the job, Howard seems to still not be fitting in, as crowds of people constantly seem to remind him. That's a duck! That's a duck, man! That's a duck! That's a tie! That's a desk! That's a dope dope movie! So Howard returns to Beverly, who happens to have a band called Cherry Bomb. I understand the bomb part, but the cherry section throws me off. There, he comes across Beverly's manager, and tries to persuade him to let her out of the band's contract. Is this gonna be easy, or is this gonna be trouble? Whoa, I think this duck means business. They pick him up and throw him across the bar, thinking they got rid of the little quacker. But then... So after that embarrassing display, the manager decides to give the women back their money and let them out of the contract. So Howard meets up with Beverly backstage where... Hi, sorry I missed the show. Oh I no, not rest. this guy again. Howard! Did the movie just run out of dialogue? I mean, that wasn't a sentence, that was a sound effect! It's like the script was written by Gerald McBoing Boy! Stop it! I don't know what that is! What the f*** is he doing there anyway? Well, he and Ron Ed have sort of got back together. Wait! He's dating one of the singers? I don't know who's more desperate for dates, you or me. Well, I guess I have a soft spot for unattractive, unromantic, unpopular, and all-around unlikable people. Phil! Don't I'm working. So even though they got out of the contract, the band is still stuck without a manager. Maybe you should be our manager. Wait a second. No. I think you'd be a great manager. No. Maybe you're just the kind of bizarro influence we need. Oh yeah! With him as their manager, their band will finally be taken seriously. But unfortunately, that's not all they talk about. Just can't seem to find the right man. Maybe it's not a man you should be looking for. Ah, 
You think I might find happiness in the animal kingdom, Ducky? Like they say, Val. Love's strange. We could always give it a try. Oh, I'm sorry, the door was open. Oh, thank God! Those three angels of mercy happen to be scientists who think they know what brought Howard here. Apparently, they were working on some sort of dimensional jumper thingy that pointed into Howard's universe and accidentally brought into our world. So the easy solution is just to send him back through the same process. So the scientists decide to drive him to the machine and send him back. Right now, you're the one and only thing that's making it very hard for me to leave. Oh. So the gang gets to the machine with no problems or dilemmas along the way, and it looks like Howard is finally going home. Well, that wasn't so bad. I mean, it certainly wasn't a good movie, but I can definitely say that I've seen worse. What was that? It exploded again. It was terrible. We have no right to tamper with the universe. Does this mean the duck's not going home? We lost control again, and there was another explosion. We brought Howard down the first time, but what if we brought down something else this time? Something that could possibly make this film go on even longer? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so yeah, the movie keeps on going, as apparently one of the scientists is taken over by an alien life form from another parallel dimension. I'm not jetting anymore. The transformation is complete. I am now someone else. My god, he's transformed into Cobra Commander! Soon the Dark Overlords will engulf the Earth. Excellent! They have spotted us. If you can't take the heat, get out of that kitchen. Cobra, attack! So the characters, I guess, just sit and talk for a bit while the scientist continues to reenact scenes from The Exorcist. I am now one of the Dark Overlords of the Universe. Yeah! On top of that, he can also use his mental powers to do horrible, menacing things, like assassinate table condiments. My powers are growing. Next, I will destroy the Tabasco sauce. Yeah! To make things worse, Howard gets into yet another fight when all the truckers at the diner start to insult him. This one for you, Cracker! Another hungry customer! Yeah! Well, gee, he threw a pie at the other guys. Surely he's not gonna throw a pie at me. No! They keep fighting until they finally grab him and put him in his place. So what are they going to do, like, beat him up, or toss him around a bit, or tie him down and try to decapitate him? Dude, when the truckers become homicidal maniacs? But the belching Skeletor gets up and saves Howard so that he can get the key to the dimensional machine back. Sounds like a bunch of bull puppies. <laughs> the odd thing is that even after people leave, he just keeps blowing I guess he just has a real hate for food condiments and kitchen utensils. That dinner flatware must die! So the scientist kidnaps Beverly and decides to take her away. Because... Because... Why are you kidnapping her anyway? Yeah, that's what I thought. On the way there, the alien inside him needs to recharge his energy. He does it by taking out the cigarette lighter and doing this. <laughs> I got nothing to say. I think the scene speaks for itself. Meanwhile, Howard meets up with Tim Robbins as they just so happen to find a plane, figure out how to fly it, and use it to save Beverly. I can't believe a movie about a nerdy Tim Robbins and an alcoholic talking duck could be so implausible! It's like a bad trip. Meanwhile, the alien makes it back to the laboratory after getting rid of some pest cops. Smog inspection. <laughs> I never knew my mother. He ties down Beverly, hoping to transfer another alien into her body as Robbins and Howard come in to save the day. Beverly gives them some helpful advice. He's in a bad mood! I really hope she dies. So after the scientist transforms into Albert Einstein's heroin addict cousin, Howard rushes at him with a laser gun and blows everything up. Of course they go through the scene where they think he's dead, but he wakes up and everything seems to be okay. So this has got to be the end of the movie, right? No? You still want to make it a little stupider? Okay, why don't we have the alien mutate into something Ray Harryhausen would throw up and have Howard run at it with the laser gun again? <gasps> but there's more Harryhausen vomit coming through the portal. What do we do? 
The machine, Howard! You gotta destroy it! Blast it! No, Howard, don't! Huh? We'll never get home. Yes, let the monster slowly kill us and eat us alive, knowing that at least the machine will be okay to take you back home. Why are you still letting her talk? Destroy the thing! <laughs> and then we get the scene where we think Howard is dead. Gee, it's almost as good as the first time you did it! I am not Howard anymore! <laughs> oh good, he's possessed! Does that mean we can kill him? Oh, it was just a joke. Ha ha ha, hilarious. So everybody returns home. I guess Howard is their new manager. I'm hoping he only speaks via telephone. And at the end, he even has his own guitar solo. Oh yeah, you will believe a duck can rock. I also believe that a duck can blow! This is the worst thing that George Lucas has ever made since... Anything not Star Wars or Indiana Jones related. He's slowly trying to destroy. Apart from being silly, stupid, and surprisingly boring, this film is just plain mean-spirited. Everything is shot in the dark, someone's always trying to kill him or hurt him. It's just a thoroughly unpleasant movie. But hey, look on the bright side. It could be worse. No, no, I can't, actually. This is the worst. If you have a chance to pass up this duck suck, I suggest you drop it like the rotten egg that this stink bomb was born out of. Just remember, kids, quack is whack. I'm the nostalgia critic, I remember, so you don't have to. Woo